So we are going to witness the crumbling of the US dollar monopoly and the SWIFT system uh, monopoly. It, that could be faster than many people have imagined before. I will perhaps uh, briefly uh, make uh, two or three points to start the ball rolling. Uh, first, concerning the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict, uh, it's interesting to observe this overall reaction to this conflict. The West favors sanctions, the rest does not favor sanction. So many uh, countries, big ones, China, India, Brazil, South Africa, Mexico, in other words, most populations in the world are not in favor of sanctions. Why so? Uh, to my mind, I think Russia's military operation has essentially two objectives. One is military, demilitarization of Ukraine, denazinization of Ukraine. This military part is controversial. It could be very controversial. Yet the other objective, I think, is to reshape the existing US-dominated monopolar world order into a multipolar world order. And this objective actually finds echoes across the world, especially among the non-Western countries. Most people think this is correct, we should do that. Indeed, people are fed up with the monopolar world order dominated by the United States and Western interests. I think a process of reform of this old order has already started as shown in the case of G20 replacing G7 and also China's BI, Belt and Road Initiative. But I think Russia now <laughs> plays the role of a revolutionary. That's important. Yeah. Uh, the good example of this uh, uh, revolutionary is Putin's decision to link rupa with Russia's natural gas. And the Chinese word for currency is made up of two characters. One is goods, the other is money. And Putin has turned the currency war from a Chinese point of view, imposed by the West, into war between goods and money. And Russia has goods and the West has money, but their money may not be able to buy Russia's goods. That's important. It is, uh, you know, I sometimes use a Chinese phrase called the so it's a mind liberation, emancipation of the mind for many countries, especially developing countries. So we are going to witness the crumbling of the US dollar monopoly and the SWIFT system uh, monopoly. It, that could be faster than many people have imagined before. Uh, after all, you know, by freezing US, uh, by freezing and confiscating Russia's state and private assets, and weaponizing dollar and SWIFT system. I think the US itself had destroyed the very foundation of this existing international economic order. So that's my first point. And my second point is concerning this military spending. As we know, the latest report of uh, CIPRI uh, reveals that world military expenditure has passed $2 trillion for the first time. And the US military budget now stands at for this year, I think $770 billion, more than the total military expenditures of the next 10 countries after the United States. I re well remember, you know, at the end of the Cold War in the early 1990s, mm -hmm. uh, people talked a lot about the so-called peace dividends. That is, with the end of the Cold War, more money will be channeled into peace and development. Yet what we see today, more military spending, more destructions, more wars, and more crises. Something must have gone wrong. And it also reminds me of the US spending $2.3 trillion on this senseless Afghan war, killing, destruction, violation of human rights over a whole period of 20 years. And um, I look at figures by United Nations, over 90% Afghans now suffer from hunger. And uh, more children also suffer from diseases, from malnutrition. So this is uh, miserable. And it reminds me of China's case, you know, uh, China spent roughly in terms of dollar, uh, $250 billion over the past 10 years. We have eradicated the last batch of poverty. Roughly 100 million people were lived out of abject poverty with one-tenth 
of this $2.3 trillion, wiping out abject poverty across China, uh, the last batch of poverty was uh, ended. Same with $2.3 trillion, I think the United States could have uh, eliminated student loan debt across the United States, relieving the burden for 45 million Americans and perhaps also help all the Americans get out of the medical debt. Obviously, the U.S. democracy has been hijacked by the American military industrial complex, which have profited hugely from the Afghan war and from the ongoing Ukraine crisis and conflict, but at the expense of the American people and other peoples. And my last point will be very brief. With the Ukraine conflict, Europe now is in the deep crisis, energy crisis, food crisis, refugee crisis, manufacturing industry crisis, and more worrying is Europe's peace itself is in crisis, and the list goes on. This is perhaps very unfortunate. For one thing, I think Europe itself is to blame, as now Europe has lost its vision, its independence, its own strategic autonomy. It has become a mere follower of the United States. And this does not augur well for the present and the future of Europe. I think we Asian countries, we Asians should draw lessons from Europe's failure, which reject categorically the expansion of NATO into Asia. We should reject categorically military solution to territorial disputes between states. And what has driven Asia to its uh, present success in the past few decades is our overwhelming emphasis and focus on peace and development. This is what I call Asian wisdom. And the Chinese idea behind this Belt and Road Initiative, discussing together, building together, and profiting together, is also Asian wisdom. And the Western approach, divide and rule, which they apply everywhere they go, leads to conflicts, leads to wars. But we Asians prefer what I call unite and prosper, which is also Asian wisdom. So let's together highlight our Asian wisdom as a way pointing to the right direction for our human society. Thank you. Thanks a lot for um, those words. Um, they are, I think, a very good stimulation for thinking about the current crisis. Mm-hmm.